Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. Uh, we're going to do a short video series on setting up a project, uh, Xamarin Classic or Xamarin Native, whatever you want to call it, with MVVM. Now, Xamarin Classic has a lot of advantages over Xamarin Forms in that you have a lot more control of how the app looks and feels. Um, the downside being you're going to have to rewrite a, a little bit more code. Um, but even so, I think that Xamarin Classic, or Xamarin Native, as some people call it, is, is the better way to do it just because you have so much more control. I can't count how many times I've started a project that in Xamarin Forms that later on we decide we need more fine-tuned control of the screen, uh, and then it ends up taking a lot longer than it would take with Xamarin Forms. So uh, a good way to share a lot of code in Xamarin Classic is using MVVM and a specific tool called MVVM Cross. So I'm gonna show a little project on how to get MVVM Cross set up and how we can add a, a few little tools to it to make it better and more easier to use. Um, so here we're gonna be creating a new project uh, in Visual Studio and we're just gonna be creating a cross-platform app uh, and we're gonna call it MVVM Xamarin Classic. Now we're gonna be using native for the UI technology, and then we're gonna be using a portable class library. Okay, so we, here we have our created projects. We've got a Android, iOS, and UWP project, as well as a portable class library for the shared code. We're gonna go ahead and delete the UWP project because we're not gonna be using that um, for this tutorial. So now we just have our Android and iOS projects. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add MVVM cross to all of our projects. So we're going to look for the MVVM cross .starter pack. So this is going to give us some of the core code that comes with MVVM cross so we can get going faster. Okay, we have finished adding MVVM cross, so let's look at what they added. In our PCL, we've got this app.cs class. Um, it looks like it's doing a little bit here with services and registering an app start. We also have a main view model, which is a MVX view model. Uh, we have initialize method, constructor, as well as a few commands and a property set up for us that we'll dig into in a little bit. My class is actually just a class that was already present in the PCL when we created the project. So we can go ahead and delete that. Now let's take a look at the Android project. We have a few uh, more classes here added. Uh, we have the assets folder, which is already there. We have resources. Uh, we, and then we have this folder called to do MVVM cross. So we're just gonna have to click on this file and do everything it says. The first thing it says is add a reference to your core PCL project, which that's already done for us when we created the project with Visual Studio. And the second one is to remove old main launcher activities, such as the main activity or activity one. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's our main activity and let's delete it. So once we've done those two things, we can go ahead and delete this folder and get rid of it. Now on the iOS side, we also get this to do MVVM cross folder. So let's take a look at that. Once again, it asks us to add a reference to the core PCL project, which is already done. Then we're going to modify the app delegate to create the new setup class and to call the IMVX app start. But then it tells you there's sample code for this in appdelegate.cs.txt. So what we can do is we can open up our appdelegate.cs.txt and just copy this code and go ahead and paste it right into our app delegate. And once we've done that, we've completed this to do, so we can go ahead and delete that. So if we take a look at the Android project, we have a splash screen class here um, that MVVM Cross will be using, as well as a setup class. And this is gonna be where we can configure MVVM Cross to, to do stuff like we want it to. Uh, we then also have a linker please include class. This is just um, so linking works correctly. And then we also have a debug, debug trace, which we can ignore because it's just doing some debug stuff. The only real classes that MVVM cross has added for us that's being used in our application is this mainview.cs. So if we look at mainview.cs, it's a activity, an MVX activity, and we're setting the content view to mainview. 
So let's check out our resources.layout.mainView. So if we go over to the source tab, we can see that we have a edit text along with a button. Notice that the edit text is using a local MVX bind attribute that is saying we want to bind the text attribute of this edit text to a text property in our view model. So if we come back over and look at our main view model, we can see that we have a text property in our view model. So this edit text in our view is binding the text of that edit text to the text property on our view model. Similarly, we have a button in our view using the same MVX bind attribute. We're binding the click command to reset text command on our view model. So if we go back over to our view model, we can see here's our reset text command, which calls reset text, uh, which will set text to hello MVVM cross. So this is, this is where we can start sharing a lot of code. We can share the, the view models between Android and iOS, as well as all the business logic. The only real difference you'll hopefully have in your projects will be these view files. So you'll be creating a separate main view, um, dot AXML and a separate main view in your iOS project, but everything else will be shared because everything else should be binding. So let's go ahead and take a look at the iOS project now. Here we have our views class along with our main view .cs. If we look at our main view .cs, we have our view did load method. And in here we're manually creating uh, a binding set between the main view and the main view model. And we're binding the text field to the text property and setting the button to the reset text command. Now I don't have my Mac server really connected. I think it says it's connected, but it's not really working. Um, but we could also look at the zip file, which is just going to be what the view actually looks like. Uh, the real meat of the code right here is in view didn't load. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like on Android. So notice we're getting a error here called type or name space name core could not be found. So this is a problem with the default code that MVVM cross gives us. So we're gonna have to go in and change uh, core to something else because our project does not have core in the namespace. So the next error we're going to get is no resource found that matches the given name at icon with value mipmap slash icon. So this is another uh, problem with MVVM cross that we're just going to have to fix here real quick. Um, if you notice, if we look in the resources folder, our, our icon is in a folder called drawable slash icon, uh, but it thinks it's in a folder called mipmap dot uh, icon. So we're just going to change it from mipmap, mipmap to drawable. So here's where the mipmap.icon is, but that's not actually where um, the icon comes from because the, the Android manifest is loaded based off of the attributes of classes. So actually, if we go to our splash screen here, we can change this mipmap to drawable here. So here we can see our project. We can edit the text of this. And as soon as we hit reset, it should reset the text to hello MVM cross which after we tap on it, it, it does so. So that's gonna be the end of this video. In the next videos, we're gonna go more into depth on how we can configure MVVM cross to do what we want and how we can use it to navigate around and, and that sort of thing. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I will see you next time.